closing, sir. We can get out of here now. My pleasure, Patty. Uh, gentlemen, for those of you who haven't known me very long, that was my 25th mission. And this time when I say, let's go home for me, my friends, it is home. <laughs> Take over, will you, Don? Yeah, I was a... Old Tom Parsons. Just been born again. Been a peaceful old age now. I thought you gentlemen ought to see this. First, these pictures were very difficult to obtain. Second, this is the airplane the enemy will soon be building in the factories you seem incapable of destroying. A rocket powered German fighter. More acceleration, greater speed than any other aircraft in the air. Fantastic. Incredible. I've sent you over there in groups. I've sent the whole wing over. And yet, those Sparingen factories still stand. Now, gentlemen, what are we going to do? Are we going to let them turn out enough of those to sweep us out of the sky? Sir, we were hit by the worst flak I've ever seen, and at least 80 planes. Now, every time we go in... Fred, I know those are good excuses, or I wouldn't hear them so often. General, the worst problem, sir, is terrain. These long ridges can analyze our air attacks, sir. We have to fly straight down this valley for five minutes to get an aiming point. General, this is not a daytime precision target, sir. The RAF failed there at nighttime saturation rates. Why don't we try nighttime precision raids, sir? Well, to begin with, we're not sufficiently experienced to do high-altitude pinpoint bombing at night. Well, we could if a target were visible. Suppose we sent in a pathfinder, low and slow with incendiaries, to light up the target area. Where's the genius to fly the pathfinder, Joe? He'd have to go 100 feet off the deck to get below the flak from those hills. At night? Good luck. Well, granted, it would take a man with a special kind of experience. But I have just such a man in my group. He hasn't been with me very long, but you two know him. Tom Parsons. Ain't gonna fly no more, no more. Ain't gonna fly no more. Ain't gonna fly, ain't gonna fly. Ain't gonna fly no more. Clock High, a QM production, starring Paul Burke, also starring Chris Robinson and Frank Overton, with guest stars Bradford Dillman, Don Galloway, Andrew Duggan, Antoinette Bauer. Tonight's episode, 25th Mission. Again? Well, he transferred up uh, near Scotland someplace and in the family. And... Hey, boys, I'll buy the first round. We'll drink to where I'm going, huh? It's a nice little training base back stateside where the quail fly low and slow. Yeah, <laughs> quail without feathers. <laughs> hey, Tom, look who's back. Well, if it ain't old Bruce, doggone, how are you, boy? Hey, Kevin Callie. How are you? Would you Hi. look? Would you look at all the gongs old Bruce has collected for himself? Knock but it off, Tom. Hey, when they let you out of the hospital, Bruce. A couple hours ago. What is this, a celebration? Well, oh, you're what? doggone right. The ever loving eighth is going to pin another air medal on me and send me home today. Home? I'll have you know I've soon completed number 25. Thank you. 
Well, I'll buy the beers if you'll help me carry them. It's about time. Say, uh, hey, you, you really feeling okay, boy? Huh? Well, you wouldn't come and ask me when I was in the hospital. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Bruce, I tried, but, you know, they've been running me half to death. You know, Naomi came to see me three, four times. You don't say. You know, she never told me that. Hey, what's going on between you and my girl, old buddy, huh? <laughs> I gather you're taking her home with you. Uh, why, did she say that? That's what she believes. Uh, well, uh, there's a few things that uh, got to be worked out. Like what? Well, you just don't... Uh load a female-type British civilian on a military transport and carry her off to Beulah Land. You know, we've got to work things out. Say, I'm meeting her later at the Star and Bottle. You join us, okay? No, Tom, three's a crowd. Us three? Come on, I don't go with us. Now you come along. Bruce, good to have you back. Good to be back, sir. Major, the Colonel would like to see you. Me? What for? Well, I suppose he'll tell you. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, Bruce, do me a favor, will you? Go meet Naomi. Tell her I'll be there as soon as I'm through with the colonel. and go into full-time production with these rocket planes. If we do, they're going to take control of the skies right away from us. The only thing we have left to try is a nighttime precision raid. Hmm. When you talk about uh, sending a pathfinder in ahead of the group to light up the target for you, well, you realize what you're asking. Well, he'll have to fly up the valley below the ridge tops to keep underneath the flag. A hundred feet or lower. And at night, when 10 gets you 20, he runs into a shadow full of rocks. Well, also, he'll have to frame the target in light. That means he'll have to make two runs. So he'd pull up, reverse at the end of the first run, come back and bracket the factory between two fires. Oh, it won't be easy. Whose idea was this? Mine? Why? Oh, well, uh, well, I suppose you could strip a 17 down, you know, no guns, no radio, just pilots, engineer, bombardier. She'd be quick on the trigger. No, I'm afraid you'd be a sitting duck in a 17 without guns. Sitting duck anyway. With any luck, you might be able to make the... Now, wait a minute, Colonel. Look, Tom, your number five file shows that you have extensive training in low-level attack techniques. You also have a green instrument card. You're top rated, and I don't have time to go looking for volunteers. I'm afraid you'll have to, Colonel. I just finished my 25th mission. 25th mission? Look, Major, I've only known you for a month, but I know you have the background and the training to make this job work. The directive says 25 missions, then rotation. I've done my 25, sir. I'm sorry. Directives? Regulations? Now, don't try to make me feel guilty, Colonel. I mean, armies are run by regulations, and the reason this one says 25 is that's about all that uh, a normal man can stand. All right, Major. It'll take me a couple of days to cut those rotation orders. Meanwhile, I want you to train another pilot for the Pathfinder mission. I'm well, glad to be of any help I can, sir. I might say that... I'll let you know when I pick the right man. Pick somebody you don't mind losing, Colonel, because... Uh... Your Pathfinder pilot will never get out alive. That'll be all, Major. Yes, sir. Harvey, I want you to pull a number five file on all pilots who have had more than minimum night flying time. Also, anyone who has flown attack bombers. How long have you known, Tom? Since Kelly Field. I came overseas as his co-pilot and flew with him until he got sick the first time. Tell me truly, is he tired of me? Just because he's late for a date? You know, we made some lovely, romantic, quite marvelous plans. And they were all to begin when his tour ended. He didn't even tell me about his 25th mission coming up. Well... 
You know Tom can forget things. But that's too convenient. I'm not quite dewy fresh out of girls' school, you know, Bruce. Tom's not a schoolboy either. He's had other girlfriends, I'm sure. A guy with a girl like you, the others wouldn't count much anymore. And that's the truth. Now that's why I'm asking. How does one tell when one doesn't count anymore? Can I ask you, how much difference does it really make to you? Were you really making plans or was it just romantic talk? Because if counting is important... Sir? Yes. Excuse me, sir. Miss Rockford, Major Parsons asked me if I'd find you. He can't come into town tonight. And to ask Captain Kelly if, if you'd mind seeing him lady home. Thank you, Sergeant. Yes, sir. There's my answer. I'm just another in the line of silly girls. What do I say, Bruce? Something gallant? Come in. Major Parsons reporting his orders, sir? Right. Captain Collie and you flew together, trained together. I understand you're pretty good friends. Sure we are. Well, he has the qualifications and the desire, and I have just two days to get this mission ready. Captain Collie's going to fly the Pathfinder to Sveringen. Bruce is? Well, he knows the odds are against him, Major. But the better his preparation is, the better his chance of surviving. And that's in your hands. That's all, Major. Major Stovall. Oh, yes, General Britt. Harvey, let me speak to Joe. Well, he's over at base engineering on that Pathfinder thing. Well, what's the story on that, Harvey? I have Major Tom Parsons' file on my desk with rotation orders. I thought he was going to fly this Varingen mission. Oh, well, he's done his 25, that's all, sir. Uh, uh, Captain Cowley's going to fly it, Bruce Cowley. Parsons up with him now, giving him special instruction. Very interesting. Well, Harvey, have Major Parsons report to me here as soon as he lands. Colonel Gallagher tells me that Captain Cowley made the world's worst landing when you came down. Well, sir, two, three hours of skimming the treetops, your depth perception gets a little out of whack till you're used to it. Can you get him used to it in the time you have? A couple of days, sir. Well, you'll be fine. He's good. But you're better. Yes, sir, my experience. I mean, you do a better job as the Sparingan Pathfinder pilot. He's the best man available, sir. Only because there is no appeal by which you can be persuaded to do the job yourself. Sir, I've flown my 25. You look like a soldier. I suppose you drink and swear and trifle with women like a soldier. But I'm prompted to wonder, Major, if there isn't something rank and rotten under that uniform. Permission to ask you questions. Stand at ease. What question? What motivates this abuse of a subordinate officer, sir? This does. Your record as a combat pilot. 25 missions, you say. Let's have a look at some of them. You were alerted for Schweinfurt. You were reported sick. Alerted for Willemshaven, sick. Hamburg aborted. Faulty engine. And what do maintenance records reveal about that engine? Nothing. The Bremen raid. Sick again. Now let's have a look at some of the ones you've completed. Can you recite them? I can. The Seine estuary, the marshalling yards at Dijon, a couple of dockyards, an airfield here and there, and then back to the Seine again. Milk runs, Major. A career pilot with more experience, more of a chance for survival than any of these kids that are giving their lives. And you have avoided every deep penetration, every high-risk mission that's been undertaken since you've been here. And you've avoided a flying evaluation board, which is more than I can understand. Now, I can give you the benefit of a very grave doubt 
and can see that you may not be a coward, Major. But one thing your, uh, your records do prove, a little close scrutiny. An operation says you didn't fly long enough or far enough on any abort to be qualified for credit. You're one shy. You've only flown 24. Sir, there, there, there must be some mistake. You made it. You can't count. You owe me one more mission, Major, and I'll sign your rotation order when that mission is completed. You're dismissed. <laughs> Colonel Gallagher, this does not relieve the 918th of the Sverndon mission, but because of it, he'll fly the milk run tomorrow. A diversionary sweep at Saint Nazaire. Your two groups will hit the primary target. Now let's go see what G2 has to say about this little surprise. Yes, sir. General. Sir, with your approval, I'm going to leave Tom Parsons at home tomorrow morning. For what reason? Well, I'm entitled to one more mission from the man. I want it to be a good one. You're saving him for Sverndon? Yes, sir. Well, I think Major Parsons ought to fly his last milk run and then go home. I think there's a strong possibility the man is yellow. And I think you don't want a coward flying that pathfinder. And if you consult your officer's guide, you'll find that what a general thinks can usually be interpreted as an order. Yes, sir. Officer's Guide, 9th edition, chapter 21. But you read orders for a mission like tomorrow, you wonder. Easy tomorrow, everything maximum. <laughs> Only the geniuses never say just maximum load, they specify. Minute details, oil to the ounce, number of rounds of ammunition, Boy, we could need that ammo tomorrow morning. I hope they gave us enough. I'll be too tough tomorrow. Well, you may be, but we fly with Parsons. What's wrong with Parsons? I heard he was good. Well, it ain't him, Comanche. It's his luck. I mean, a guy just has so much luck, and every mission he flies uses up a little of it. Logically, Major Parsons has used all his, and we'll have trouble tomorrow. Well, what do you mean by logically? Well, say he had luck enough for 25 missions. He's used all that. Now, I know they, they say he really only had 24, but he thought 25. So did we. See? No. <laughs> I mean, one more tomorrow. It's like double jeopardy. It's brilliant. You ought to take up philosophy. You're very bright. Where are you going, Comanche? They tell me there's a briefing at 0530. I'd like to do some sack time. Uh, Comanche, I got a jeep. I'll take you back to the base. You guys, too. Come on. I'll turn that down. You really think trouble tomorrow? <laughs> you watch it. Flak, kraut fighters all over the sky. Maybe I'd better take a little extra ammunition. Also, your parachute. Also, some arrows in case your gun blows up. Today. It flies like a garbage truck. I noticed you were sluggish on takeoff. 
man, I don't want this today. Niner 7 Foxtrot, this is Blue Leader. What is your position? Over. Blue Leader, this is Niner 7 Foxtrot. We're still climbing. Uh, right behind you. Over. Blue Leader. Raj. You guys were making bets last night. Commissioner Parsons would have it rough today. Your trouble over. Nine or seven fox track. Somebody double cross me, Ramrod. I just blew an engine. I'm turning back to base. Nine or seven out. What'd you do to my engine? Now, take it easy, Major. Now, look. Somebody knew that was my last mission, and somebody was out to sabotage me. Now, what did go? I gotta say to you, you greasy bum! Huh? Why couldn't I try? Wait! seen a guy who wanted mission credit so bad. Hey, babe. What'd I tell you, huh? Bad day? Listen, babe. I, I think I maybe know why it happened. Stay out of it. For now, just, just stay out of it. mission, it wouldn't be hard to conclude off his record that he deliberately caused that engine to blow, but it was a milk run. It would have gotten him home. How has his airplane performed in the past? No malfunction reported, sir. Why did it fail today? Why does he feel he's been double-crossed? Has he been? Come in. Sir, permission to introduce some evidence. What do you mean by that? Is that permission, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Sir, we flew a diversionary course today. We carried maximum loads. You add an additional 800 pounds to a tired B-17 that's gross-weighted 30 ton or better, you get what happened to Major Parsons. Why was he overloaded? Sir, it um, seemed to us like kind of an extra mission for the Major, and uh, well, we thought it might turn out to be a bad day. My my gunners all brought extra ammunition. Where are you going? Oh, please, honey, why can't you forgive me? I mean, if I hurt your feelings or something, I'm sorry. Please, Naomi, I, I kind of wish you'd pretend a little. Hey. 
I happen to need you. Please don't. Oh, Tom, I got your message at the Star and Bottle the other night. I got the whole message. There's nothing more to say. Well, uh, I got myself in some kind of trouble, Naomi. It's a funny thing, but uh, I got no place else I can go. Well, what is it you want, honey? Promises? Why can't we be like we were without all the promises? You gave your promises and you made me give mine. You put us on that footing, I don't know why. But here it is and it can't be changed. Oh, honey, I never made no hard, fast promise. Now, you know that. Yes, I'm sure that is true. I don't remember, but I'm sure you do. And I'm sure you were quite prepared to say just that. I never made any hard or fast promises. But have you ever, Tom? Have you ever promised anything and meant it? I mean, even to yourself? Naomi, I... I'm sorry. I was looking for him. Tom, you better get back to the base. Well, I just, uh, lost my head. They can see that, can't they? Don't add AWOL to it. Go back. Yeah. Well, you're a nice girl, Naomi. He's a nice guy. There's nothing really wrong? Psychosomatic trauma. What's that? Well, I really don't know. It's uh, in the medical journals, a fancy name for uh, black fever, shell shock. A man gets to a point where he, he can't face what lies ahead. Like flying a dangerous mission? Dangerous mission. Or uh, facing arrest in court martial? That would do it. Colonel, don't uh, misunderstand me. He's under sedation now, but the pain that hit him was real and physically unbearable. Okay, thanks, Tom. Major? How many times has this happened to you? What's the difference? Well, according to what the doctor tells me, there is a difference between this and cowardice. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Major, do you know why your plane didn't climb out this morning? Yeah, my gunner smuggled an overload aboard, and Major Stovall was kind enough to tell me. He was also kind enough to advise me of my rights under the 17th Article of War. Thank you and good night, sir. All right, Major. You're restricted to the base, pending the filing of charges. Look, come on. I, I've been hit by a brother officer. I never opened my mouth. Now why pick on me? I lost my head for a minute, that's all. Colonel, they'll sack me, you know that? They'll kick me out. You blew the easy way out. Rotation. But dismissal from the service. Colonel, you, you could help me if you wanted. I'll apologize to those guys. You could put a reprimand in my record, huh? All right, I'll fly the Sveringen mission. How's that? Major, if I struck a bargain with you, I think you'd try. I really do. But it wouldn't do any good. Because your old bellyache would come back again. Look, Major, you're gonna have to face something head-on. 
or you're going to have pain for the rest of your life. Until you won't be able to even tie your own shoes without breaking down. Now you forget the swearing and raid. I wouldn't risk a kite on your ability to see that through. But you are going to face court martial. This time you're going to see through. Now I hope the sentence is light. But you face it. Watching them uh, loading those napalm bombs into the bomb bay. I guess Sveringen's on tonight, huh? Sveringen's on. Taking off kind of early, ain't you? Oh, it'll be dark by the time we get there. This allows an hour of daylight for rendezvous and form up. Uh. <laughs> Seems that I got the whole air corps sword me right now. So I thought that uh, we might just as well talk about Naomi. I don't think there's very much to say, Tom, or that this is the time. You still saw at me for speaking lightly of her affections? I told you I felt about that. I'm sorry I hit you that night. Well, now that's I... a sore point with me, Bruce. You see, I'm about to get kicked out of the service for laying hands on Patty and that crew chief. So because I blew an easy mission. Well, it wasn't much of a reason, but a better one than you had, you know, some, some female. Now listen, Tom, when I get back off of this well, mission... Well, when you do, she may not be here. You saw how easy she went from me to you. No, knock it off. Now, in case I don't see you again, pal, you got my airplane. You got my gal. Now, they ain't worth a dime. Both together. How's the hot stuff in the Bombay? It's all secure, sir. I just checked the shackles. To my office, gentlemen. Uh, now, you remember, you can toggle them from up here in case there's anything goes wrong with the bomb train rig. Need to have all that fire busted loose while it's still on board. Where's Captain Cowley? Want to park the Jeep. He's coming. Well, uh, we overhauled the uh, tactical appraisal of all that's got to be done and formulated a last-minute change of plan. Major, how come you're wearing a captain's jacket? darkness in about 20 minutes and flying loose. Navigators on your toes. Pathfinder, I'm going to give you running lights for reference until you have to leave us. Okay, radio silence now unless I break it. Ramrod out. Radio operator to pilot. Over. I'm in radio. Sir, we just pulled in a code from I'd say it's permission to recall, sir. Permission to recall? Yes, sir. The Pathfinder aircraft, Colonel. Major Parsons is flying it. Ramrod the Pathfinder pilot, come in, over. 
That's him. Major, he knows, or he wouldn't be calling. Ramrod and Pathfinder pilot, do you read me? Over. All right, Ramrod, this here's your friendly little old lamplighter down here. Now look, pal, I think we both better get off the air, huh? Major Parsons, how do you get in there? Yeah. Pilot to navigator. How long to the target area? Over. Navigator, skipper. 28 minutes to the IP. Over. That means he starts descending in five minutes. Ramrod to Pathfinder co-pilot. Will you report the condition of your pilot? Over. <laughs> Pathfinder, sir. Pathfinder to Ramrod, Skipper. Now look, I ain't got no bellyache, if that's what you want to know. The group isn't brief for a turn here. We'd better start now if we're heading back, Skipper. Turn them one at a time. One collision up here would cost 20 lives. If Parsons follows up down there, it's just himself and three others. And what if he doesn't light up that target area, sir? And Sandy, we turn as briefed and go home. That when we practiced. Sir. Ramrod to Pathfinder, over. Pathfinder, right behind you, Ramrod. This is Ramrod. Good luck, Tom. Pathfinder out. I'm going to start my descent now. Pilot to nose, eh, Patty? Nose to pilot, go ahead. I got to tell you, I didn't mean to take that swing at you, pal. Yeah, okay, Tom. What'd you do to Bruce Colley? Oh, man, I really teed off on him. Brief altitude, Major. Right. Landing lights. Be coming up on the right, sir. Target over. Roger, sir. Roger. Get up! Better make your turn now, Tom. It'll be too late. 
I'm holding this course until you guys bail out. Now that's an order. There's no time. All right. Y'all get killed and don't blame me. I'm bombs away. Roger, guide me in. Come left, one degree. We've got about 40 seconds. Captain, you can see it right here. General? As you were. Captain Kelly? Got the recon report confirming yesterday's photos. The Sferingen works will not be producing rocket fighters. As a matter of fact, they're still on fire after two days. Better open that. Hey, that's mine. It's the one to Major Parsons took. The rumor is they all bailed out. Two of them were captured by the Germans and Parsons and his bombardier. They stole a boat and were picked up in the channel by the British. Where is he? Major? It's the reason you ordered me to report? Right. We thought we'd surprise you. No, actually, the general told me he'd be bringing the major along. Tom, nice to see you. Glad to be here, sir. You did a fine job. Well, Captain, I suggest you buy this man a drink. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm sure sorry about that shyness, huh? What'd you do, land on your head? Yeah, well, I'm okay. Well, uh, Colonel. Um, I thank you. Have you thought what to do about the charges filed against him, Joe? Yes, sir, I have. Throw the book at him. Well, he's a hero. Why not let the court consider that? Look, General, he faced up to a pretty rough one two days ago. I think it's his right to face his own problems the very same way. As a matter of fact, I'm sure he would want to now. Well, why don't you ask him, sir? I did. He does. On that, I think I owe you a drink. But whatever a general thinks, I uh, always interpret as an order.